Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Ayushi Paliwal from University of Delhi. So students, today we are going to discuss about the module Creep of Ceramics from the paper Ceramics. So the learning objectives of this module are, first we will discuss about the creep curve and the primary creep. Second, the phenomenology of the steady state creep. Third, the activation energy for steady state creep will be discussed. Lastly, we will discuss about the steady state creep mechanisms by first dislocation glide assisted by Klein, second diffusion creep, third creep by green boundary sliding. So students, let us start with a basic introduction about the module. Creep is nothing but the time dependent deformation of materials at constant stress. Creep deformation can occur at stresses which are too low to cause any permanent deformation at lower temperatures. It is found that the creep occurs when T is greater than 0.3 Tm for metals and T is greater than 0.4 to 0.5 Tm for ceramics, where T is the temperature and Tm is the melting point. So because of their high melting points, the ceramics are potentially very attractive for creep applications. The creep curve. A creep test is carried out by mounting the specimen in a furnace, applying a constant load to the sample and measuring the extension of the specimen with time. So the load us usually tensile but it may also be compressive while the temperature of the furnace is held constant. So a plot of the extension or strain versus time is called as a creep curve which is typically looks like as shown in this figure. If we look at this curve as we can see that it can be divided into three regions corresponding to a decreasing constant and increasing rates of strain. These regions are termed as primary, secondary or steady state and tertiary creep respectively. There is a comparatively very small elastic deformation as soon as the load is applied which can be neglected. So if the creep test is carried out for sufficient time, the specimen fractures this is called creep rupture. It should be noted that in a given creep test, not all the stages may be observed. The shape of the creep curve depends on the material and the testing conditions that is time, temperature and environment. Furthermore, the part usually spends most of its life in the steady state region which is therefore most important of the three stages. So the following are the deformation mechanisms which can occur during the creep of the crystalline solids. First is dislocation glide, second dislocation climb due to diffusion, third mass transport and change of shape due to diffusion, grain boundary sliding, so the role of these mechanisms become clear in the following discussions of the various stages of creep. Primary creep. So as mentioned above, whether a stage of creep will be observed. In a creep experiment, it depends on the material, temperature, stress and environment. So the primary creep may be observed in some materials at low temperatures and low stresses. 
in primary creep the creep rate decreases with time so at any point the creep rate is the net result of the rate of recovery and the rate of hardening if the former is lower then the creep rate will decrease with time it has been proposed that in primary creep the strain producing events gradually gets exhausted so that the strain rate decreases an example of the exhaustion of the strain producing event is the stoppage of a dislocation at an obstacle however there are views that such a picture of the primary creep is not correct the strain versus time plot during the primary creep has been found to follow some mathematical relations in some cases so according to the form of the expression the primary creep in that particular case is given a name two of these expressions and the corresponding names are epsilon equal to alpha ln t that is logarithmic creep epsilon equal to beta t to the power 1 by 3 that is parabolic creep let us now discuss the steady state creep the longest stage most of the useful life spent in the steady state stage minimum and constant strain rate of the three stages the total strain at any point during the steady state is equal to the time x steady state creep rate neglecting the very small strain from the primary stage so the phenomenology is as follows the strain rate varies as a power of the stress at a constant temperature that is it is proportional to alpha to the power n next is they are thermally activated process with an activation energy now the two can be combined to yield epsilon prime equal to a multiplied by sigma to the power n exponential minus delta h c by rt so the activation energy for creep that is delta h c is found to be equal to that for the self diffusion delta h d so this figure shows the phenomenology of the steady state creep the various phenomenological relations in the steady state creep are as follows the first part a shows the log creep life decreases as log of steady state creep rate the second part b shows the log of the steady state creep rate is directly proportional to the log of the applied stress the next shows the log of the strain is directly proportional to the reciprocal of the absolute temperature and lastly the part d shows the activation energy for the steady state creep is equal to that for diffusion of the rate controlling species activation energy for steady state creep in order to determine the activation energy for creep it is necessary to measure the strain rate at two different temperatures however the structure of the specimen also changes with time at a temperature so the challenge is to measure the creep rate at two different temperatures with the specimen having nearly the same structure this is done using a method first suggested by don the creep rate is measured at a certain temperature t1 the temperature is then quickly changed to the second temperature t2 
and the creep rate measured again before any significant changes in the structure occurs. So it can be shown that the activation energy for creep is then given by delta hc equal to r multiplied by ln of epsilon 1 prime divided by epsilon 2 prime the whole divided by 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2. So it is observed that the activation energy for creep is equal to that for self diffusion for pure metals and that for the solute solute in dilute alloys which implies that the diffusion is the rate controlling process in the steady state creep. Steady state creep mechanisms. So first we will discuss the dislocation glide assisted by climb. The main mechanism of the steady state creep at high temperatures is the dislocation glide assisted by diffusion controlled climb of the dislocations. At low temperatures also the deformation occurs by the dislocation glide. The glide of the dislocation stops when the dislocation encounters an obstacle like a grain boundary or a second phase particle. However, in creep, because of high temperature, the diffusion is fast and the dislocation can climb to a parallel slip plane, escape the obstacle and continue to glide. This results in large deformations during creep. So this figure shows the escape of the gliding dislocation by climb. That is the dislocation comes to an obstacle and the glide is stopped. The second case shows the dislocation climbs up and escapes the obstacle. So it can now glide on another slip plane. Let us now discuss the second steady state creep mechanism that is creep by diffusion. Creep by diffusion is important at high temperatures and low stresses. If there is a stress gradient in the body, a gradient in the concentration of vacancies is set up in a grain because a stress sigma lowers the formation energy for a vacancy by approximately sigma b cube, where b is the Burger's vector. For a stress free grain, the equilibrium concentration of vacancies is given by C0 equal to A exponential minus delta F by KT where delta F is the free energy for the formation of vacancies. So for a grain under the stress as shown in this figure, this changes the concentration of vacancies at the faces AD and BC to C0 equal to A multiplied by exponential minus of delta F minus sigma B cube by KT. So in this figure, the part A, the due to tensile stresses on faces AD and BC, tensile stresses are present at these faces producing a higher vacancy concentration near these faces. Part B, there is a flow of atoms from faces AB and DC to faces AD and BC. Part C shows that this results in a creep deformation. So continuing our discussion, over the creep by diffusion. So the gradient in the vacancy concentration from AD to AB and to DC 
and similarly from BC to AB and to CD is given by twice C naught multiplied by sigma B cube divided by B prime L K T where L is the grain size, K is the Boltzmann's constant and T is the temperature and B prime is a geometrical factor. So this gradient results in a flux of vacancies between the faces AD to AB and to BC and also from BC to AB and to CD. And so the flux of atoms in the opposite direction is given by flux of atoms equal to twice of D naught C naught sigma B cube divided by B prime L K T equal to twice D S sigma B cube by B K T. Now here D S is the coefficient of self diffusion. Since flux is equal to the number per unit time n divided by area equal to n by b double prime l square. So therefore n number of atoms diffusing per second equal to 2 d naught c naught sigma b cube l by b k t and b prime b double prime and b are the geometrical factors. So the strain rate is therefore epsilon prime equal to n by l cube equal to 2 sigma b cube ds by bl square kt approximately sigma ds by l square. So the creep rate due to this process is therefore expected to be directly proportional to the stress and inversely proportional to the square of the grain size. So this diffusion creep by lattice diffusion is known as herring nabarro creep. Continuing our discussion over the diffusion creep, in the polycrystalline materials at lower temperatures, the grain boundary diffusion dominates because of its lower activation energy. In this case, the creep is called as the cobalt creep and the creep rate is given by epsilon prime equal to dgb sigma ohm delta gb by kt l cube where dgb is the grain boundary diffusion constant, ohm is the atomic volume, delta gb is the grain boundary thickness and t is the temperature. Thus in this case the creep rate depends inversely on the cube of the grain size. In the fine grains ceramics the cobalt creep therefore dominates at lower stresses and higher temperatures. So the overall creep rate due to diffusion is given by the sum of herring nabarro and cobalt creep. In ceramics, the rate controlling step is always the slower moving species moving along the fastest possible Path. So students, let us now discuss the steady state creep mechanism that is creep by grain boundary sliding. Many ceramics contains a glassy phase at the grain boundaries. So viscosity of the glassy phase decreases drastically at the high temperature present during creep. So the first case is that the amount of glassy phase is high. 
So here the system can be considered as the grains of ceramics floating in the glass. The effective viscosity of the whole system is lowered and it is given by eta E equal to eta naught divided by 1 minus Vg by Vc the whole square where eta E is equal to the effective viscosity eta naught is the viscosity of the glass Vg is the volume fraction of the grains and Vc is the percolation threshold that is the minimum volume fraction of the grains at which the grains forms a continuous network. Now here the creep rate is simply given by the relation epsilon prime equal to sigma by eta e. Steady state creep mechanisms that is by creep by grain boundary sliding continued. So the case 2 that is the amount of glassy phase is small. Now here several mechanisms are proposed. One mechanism is the squeezing of the liquid glass from the boundaries under compression and flowing to those under tension. So in this case the creep rate is given by epsilon equal to alpha dot w to the power 3 multiplied by sigma divided by eta naught d q where w is the thickness of the glassy phase and d is the grain size. So steady state creep that is by combining the expression all the creep mechanisms described above can be described by a single expression as follows that is epsilon prime is equal to a d g b divided by k t multiplied by b by d to the power 3 multiplied by sigma by g to the power 3. Now here g is the shear modulus, d is the diffusion coefficient involved in the creep process, d is the grain size and the values of n and m differ for different mechanisms as given in the table in the next slide. So this table represents the values of the parameters m and n for the various creep mechanisms. So as you can see over here that is for dislocation creep mechanisms the value of m and n the value of m is 0 for all the cases whereas the value of n varies from 3, 4 to 5. Whereas for diffusional creep mechanism the value of m varies from 2 to 3 and whereas the value of n is constant. And for grain boundary sliding the value of m is 3 and n is 1. So students let us summarize what we have learned in this module. First creep is defined as the time dependent deformation of a material. It becomes appreciable at temperatures 0.4 to 0.5 or more than Tm. Second, the ceramics they have higher melting points making them more suitable for creep applications. Third, the creep curve is obtained from the creep test can be divided into three regions corresponding to a decreasing constant and the increasing rate of strain which may be primary, secondary or steady state and tertiary creep. They at larger times the specimen fractures which is known as creep rupture. Now here note all the stages may be observed in a given creep test.
material or testing conditions. Most of the life spent in the steady state region, which is the most important of all the three stages. So next we discussed about the primary creep, which is observed in some materials at lower temperature and lower stresses. Now here the creep rate decreases with time. The strain in most cases increases as the logarithm of time or fractional power of time. The behavior in the two cases is called as logarithmic creep and parabolic creep respectively. Then we discussed about the steady state or the secondary creep. The longest stage most of the strain is produced during this stage. The strain rate is minimum of the three stages and it is constant and it is a thermally activated process where the creep rate varies as sigma to the power n. Then we discussed about that the, all the phenomenological observations lead to the following creep rate equation. That is epsilon prime equal to a to the power sigma n exponential minus delta hc by rt. Then we discuss that the activation energy is found to be equal to that for self diffusion for pure materials and that for the solute in dilute alloys. Implying that the diffusion is the rate controlling process. Next, we discussed that the main mechanism of steady state creep is the dislocation glide assisted by diffusion controlled climb of the dislocations. Then we discussed that two other mechanisms are diffusion creep and grain boundary sliding. Then we discussed that the creep by diffusion is important at higher temperatures and lower stresses. Then after this, the gradient of stress has been discussed, which is in a body produces a gradient in the vacancy concentration, leading to diffusion of atoms from the location at smaller stresses than at higher stresses. After this, we discussed that when the diffusion is by lattice diffusion, the creep is called as the herring nabara creep. If the diffusion is via the grain boundaries, then it is called as cobalt creep. So the creep due to grain boundary sliding occurs in the ceramics due to the presence of a glassy phase in many ceramics. So at higher temperature, the glassy phase has low viscosity and the system as a whole has lower overall viscosity if the fraction of the glassy phase is larger. In the other case, a squeezing of the liquid glass from the boundaries under compression and flowing to those under tension occurs leading to creep. Then we discussed that the creeping rate during the steady state creep can be expressed by a single expression containing the diffusion coefficient, the temperature, the stress and the grain size. Thank you.